Hey guys, today we're going to talk about NAC, or N-acetylcysteine, which is the precursor to glutathione, the master antioxidant. It's been around since the 1960s, and in this video, I'm going to share with you over a dozen reasons why NAC is beneficial, how it's being used, and where you can get it. All right, so there's been some recent upheaval where Amazon has made a decision to remove NAC, or NAC, from its entire product catalog. Initially, this was related to the FDA's issue with NAC as a primary component in hangover relief products. Given these sudden changes, you might be concerned about where you're going to be able to purchase your next hangover cure. Wink, wink. Well, or you could be just concerned about where you're going to get NAC for the myriad of other benefits that it can be powerful and helpful for, which we're going to go over in just a moment. Well, we're going to get to all of that in a moment and offer you some suggestions. All right, guys, I'm Dr. Tim with Optimize Wellness Center, and today we're going to be able to talk about NAC and many of its benefits. And please make sure to subscribe to this channel, press the like button for this video, and hit the notification bell so that you can be aware of other upcoming videos that we're going to be sharing. And don't forget to let us know what you think about this video and put those in the comments down below. Okay, guys, so to what you are more than likely looking for and interested in, which is the dozen reasons that NAC is beneficial. Now, first and foremost, NAC boosts your antioxidant mechanisms. Glutathione is the most critical of all naturally occurring antioxidants, and glutathione is the master antioxidant because it replenishes the actions of many other antioxidants. It increases mitochondrial energy production. It improves your liver as well as your kidney health. By monitoring glutathione levels, we can measure an individual's risk for falling prey to environmental toxins. Glutathione detoxifies a large number of pollutants, carcinogens, heavy metals, herbicides, pesticides, and radiation. N-acetylcysteine, or NAC, which is the precursor to glutathione again, raises glutathione levels, and has been used to detoxify organic mercury. Oral NAC profoundly accelerates urinary methylmercury excretion to levels as much as 10 times more than usual. Glutathione and NAC lowers stress levels. It improves brain health by boosting your memory and focus by regulating glutamate levels inside of the brain. It even boosts dopamine love receptors for cognitive energy, drive, feeling good, uh, with pleasure, and focus. It's long been known and utilized for respiratory health as a mucolytic effects on the lungs, where it will re reduce and remove mucus from the lungs. It has immune system benefits. And this is where it can help to boost what's called as natural killer cells, as well, glu elevated glutathione levels enables the body to produce more white blood cells. Glutathione is kind of, or of sorts, a food for the immune system. Glutathione is at the heart of all immune functions. As well, it can improve fertility. Now, it does this by improving sperm counts as well as PCOS by reducing oxidative stress. It stabilizes blood sugar by assisting with insulin resistance. And it reduces the risk of heart disease. And lastly, It'll help you to save money by focusing on the things that actually work. All right, so in 1997, there was a study that showed really impressive results of the extension of life by 26%. Now, granted, this was done with some flies, but it then in 2018, a follow-up study showed that there may be some gender in dose dependence where it was a little bit better for the males. In 2019, another follow-up study showed that NAC reduced cancer aggressiveness, proliferation, 
in increased apoptosis. This is where cells have a programmed cell death of cancer cells. By decreasing oxidative stress and inflammatory mediators, as well as repressing glycolysis and increasing mitochondrial function. Wow, that's a mouthful. But certain cancer cells lived longer and it also reduced the effectiveness of chemotherapy and radiation, both of which notably are oxidative therapies. So if you're using an antioxidant, it would stand to reason that it would limit the function of that. Unfortunately, systemic analyses provided by the Cochrane Review have shown somewhat inconclusive results rel relative to lifespan, cancer, dietary supplementary effects, as well as exercise performance. But what we do know is that acute stress, poor diet, as well as illnesses can deplete L-cysteine levels in the body and in the brain, resulting in diminished glutathione production. Mold reduces the body's ability to be able to manufacture glutathione. Most people are deficient in magnesium. I think it's on the order of around 60% of Americans, in fact. And this reduces your ability to be able to synthesize glutathione. Now we need vitamin B2 or riboflavin um, to be able to recycle glutathione and to, start to create more and reuse that. With a mere reduction of 15%, if spent uh, glutathione within the cells, it will lead to and cause cell death. So the summary here is it doesn't take much change in your glutathione levels for cells to start to die. Now this is relevant in particular for diseases like heart disease, diabetes, neurodegenerative diseases, AIDS, as well as just simply normal aging. Now you might be thinking to yourself, why not just use glutathione, since glutathione has long been thought as the scavenger and the, have the ability to be able to mop up free radicals which damage cells. But glutathione is not particularly bioavailable, therefore supplements may not be well absorbed and the direct pathway may not be as effective as well for mopping up uh, oxidants. But an indirect pathway via what's called as the NRF2, as well as precursors, are better absorbed in the body and utilized in the body. Several things can increase endogenous, meaning internal, production of glutathione via the activation of this NRF2 pathway. And this includes things like lipoic acid, resveratrol, as well as something called sulforaphane. And this sulforaphane can increase glutathione production by as much as 2.5, 2.5 fold. But unfortunately, it's not very stable and it degrades very quickly. So we can use some other constituent components within our diet through supplementation as building blocks to create sulforaphane. And this includes something called glucorapherin as well as uh, myrosinase. But we can also use NAC, and NAC in its acetylated form of cysteine, not a normal form of cysteine. And so N-acetyl group allows for the absorption of cysteine and it protects it from the stomach acids. And this is done in the same way that the N-acetyl glutathione helps to protect it. It is also the most important amino acid to produce glutathione. So let's take some clues from the allopathic medicine world. In the Western medical setting, NAC or N acetylcysteine is used it to treat acetaminophen poisoning. And this is particularly important because of its ability to be able to help detoxify the liver. Now, acetaminophen whose best known brain uh, excuse me, brand name is Tylenol, is one of the most widely used non-prescriptive painkillers in the United States. Other drugs containing acetaminophen include things like NyQuil, Sudafed, Alka-Seltzer, Sinutab, Contact, Actifed. Now, back in 1997, the New England Journal of Medicine said that they account for 
50,000 emergency room visits and 12% of all patients hospitalized for drug overdoses, as well as 42% of all liver failures and nearly 500 deaths a year. So unfortunately, while acetaminophen is widely used and ubiquitous, it has many deleterious and um, really damaging downsides. Those who took between 105 and 365 acetaminophen pills per year had a 40% increased risk in end-stage renal or kidney disease. For those who took more than 365, meaning at least one a day or more, um, pills a year had an increased risk of end-stage renal disease was over 110%. The specific antidote used pervasively around the world for the toxicity associated with acetaminophen is N-acetylcysteine, or otherwise known as NAC. In 2016, medical and dietary supplement, uh, consumption of NAC in the uh, European Union was 3,900 metric tons. In the United States, that was 3,000 metric tons. And in India alone, it was 1,400 metric tons. Annual compound growth is expected to be over 22% in the next five years. So that's a lot of usage. The brain is especially vulnerable to inflammation, free radicals, as well as oxidative damage. If unchecked, this will result in long-term damage to cognition, neuronal potentiation, memories, and mood. NAC has been shown to affect what's called as BDNF. It blocks as well the COX-2 and the PGE2 enzymes and it reduces IL-6 and tumor necrosis factor A. This results in a reduction in neurotoxicity, brain inflammation, and oxidative stress responses. NAC may also alleviate various depressive disorders, schizophrenia, and addiction. Neurodegenerative diseases characterized by oxidative stress and neurons need optimal uh, glutathione levels to thwart that free radical damage. At Optimized Wellness Center, we regularly have folks taking NAC via oral supplementation as well as um, nebulization. And I suggest that you check one of our other videos to get more information about that. Now, oral supplementation can be in a pure form like this, which is just simply NA NAC. Or you can take it in something like this, which is a compounded formula where one of the components here is NAC. For cognitive benefits, some researchers support taking 600 milligrams three times a day. The studies have shown that up to 2,000 milligrams a day are safe and effective. For seasonal flu-like illnesses, Italian study participants found that NAC was effective with dosages of 600 milligrams two times a day for six months. In this study, only 25% had any flu-like symptoms compared with 75% of those in the placebo group. Supplementing daily with 600 milligrams of the amino acid and acetylcysteine boosts the body's production of glutathione, according to a study in the American Journal of Respiratory and Critical Care Medicine. Rarely will NAC cause um, adverse symptoms like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, or constipation. Even more rarely does NAC cause drowsiness, low blood pressure. And this may be due to really high dosages or do high dosages brought on very quickly. If you have a rare condition called cystinuria, do, uh, do not use NAC. In this condition can cause stones in your kidneys and your urethra. 
Now, what can you expect for using NAC beyond all of the things that we talked about a moment ago? Well, the densest concentration of mitochondria are found in our eyes. And therefore, one of the first improvements that people may notice is sight. It may also help with things like brain fog. And it's best to take NAC with other multivitamins for better utilization and absorption. And so in this instance, if you're not taking other multivitamins, in which case you could take this direct, it would be best to take something like this, which has essentially a multivitamin with NAC compounded into it. Until May of 2021, NAC was an over-the-counter um, product that you could buy regularly just on your own. And then, after 57 years, the FDA decided that it's considering to reclassify it as a drug. This may have to do with the fact that in 1963, it was marketed as a drug with the trade name Mucomnist, uh, which was a synthetic NAC to break up mucus in the upper respiratory tract. Recently, Scott Tips, who is a lawyer and has been involved in the diet and supplement industry for several decades, stated in a Whole Foods article that, and I quote, the Natural Products Association, NAP, has been correctly advising its members to continue to sell NAC-containing supplements since the FDA has not yet taken final action on NAC and since it is still an open question as to when NAC first appeared on the market as a drug, NAP's president, Daniel Fabricant, has spoken plainly, quote, like we've told our members, sell it directly. Sell it through other vendors because it's not an unlawful ingredient. This is by no way a closed chapter with the FDA on NAC. And in particular, one of the many bold points that they cited in this article was referencing Section 201, which can, states it cannot be applied retroactively to a supplement marketed before the Dietary Supplement Health Education Act, or DSHEA, gosh, that's long, has passed and signed into law in October of 25 and 1994. Now remember, NAC has been used since the 1960s since Congress made no provision for retroactivity and the entire purpose of this section was to incentivize drug companies to develop new drugs, which, uh, which incentive is missing if the same drug and supplement were already on the market prior to the DSHEA's provision they even existed. To be able to directly purchase NAC and or glutathione, use the link found in the description below. From here you'll be able to receive discounts as well as be assured of the quality of the product. And this is really important because since many websites have really great marketing but there were no assurances that they are not using expired ingredients. Uh, they display inaccurate labels, and there's the, wrong, uh, excuse me, the risk of cross-contamination of other ingredients. And so this website that is linked below uses what's called as GMP, or Good Manufacturing Practices, and it uses third-party evaluations of the products that we sell. So guys, I hope that this was a helpful video for you relevant to NAC. Um, please check back for additional videos and press that like button and subscribe to our channel and let us know what you think in the comments below. I'll look forward to catching up with you in the next video.